Welcome to Life Devotions, and thank you for joining me today. The True God and Eternal Life is the title of this devotion. Here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, we read, And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true, and we are in Him who is true, in His Son Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Let me read you that little verse from the Living Bible. And we know that Christ, God's Son, has come to help us understand and find the true God. And now we are in God because we are in Jesus Christ, His Son, who is the only true God, and He is eternal life. You see, dear friends, God reconciles us to Himself in Jesus Christ. Second Corinthians 5 teaches about this many other places, Romans chapter 3 and so forth. We are reconciled to God, made right in His sight, reunited with Him, made one with Him. And all these beautiful scriptures, especially John 17, 21 through 26 talks about this. Jesus praying, Father, the glory of being one with you that you have given me, I have given to them so that they may be made perfectly one with us so that the world may know you sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Oh, what powerful, powerful thoughts there. And John 17, verse 21 through 26, I read it from the Living Bible. And here, my dear friends, we are given understanding to know him who's true and we are in him who is true in god in jesus christ who is god he is eternal life he is that wonder of his of reconciliation it says that he the blameless one let me read it to you i need to keep praying that scripture to, to know to quote it completely for christ also suffered first peter 3 18 once for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Spirit, to bring us to God. Christ brings us to God. He presents us to the Father in himself, holy, acceptable, and well-pleasing. In Christ, we are presented to the Father, we are made accepted in the beloved, Ephesians 1 verse 7, according to the riches of the glory of his grace. We are made accepted in the beloved. Oh, I love that thought. Made accepted. I am accepted and well-pleasing to my Father. I am holy and without blame before him in his love. You find that there in Ephesians chapter 1 starting at verse 3. Oh, how I love to think and meditate on these thoughts that I'm holy, acceptable, well-pleasing to my Father in Christ. I see myself before the Father in Christ, holy and well-pleasing. And here in Isaiah 53, right? Listen to this little verse that I utterly love. He, Jesus, shall see the fruit of of the travail, the suffering of his soul, and be satisfied by his knowledge of himself, which he possesses and imparts to others, shall my uncompromisingly righteous one, my servant, justify many and make many upright and in right standing with God, for he shall bear their iniquity and their guilt with the consequences, says the Lord. It is in Christ, my friends, that you and I have been made accepted before the Father. How? He bore the punishment of our sin. The chastisement of our sin that was due us was upon Him. And now He imparts to us the life by which He was raised from the dead, acceptable and well-pleasing. So a life in Christ, Christ's life in me, is my access to the Father and my homecoming in His presence. The Heavenly Father is always drawing you to His Son, Jesus Christ, so that through His Son, Jesus Christ, you may receive a warm welcome 
in his presence. And if I take you, for example, here to John 14, right? And this is one of those phenomenal chapters, like chapter 53 of Isaiah, <clears throat> where Jesus says, now listen, a little while longer and the world will see me no more, but you will see me because I live, you will live also. At that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. The understanding that the indwelling life of the Son of God gives to us is that we are in Him, and He is in us, perfectly one with the Father. You come into this prayer that is spiritually alive, that is spiritually connected with the Heavenly Father, and that prayer that spirit life prayer is the spirit of life in Christ in you that completely and perfectly gives you fellowship with the Father, oneness with the Father, oneness with the Father, unbroken communion with Him. Now come, my dear friends, believe. Believe that this is the great favor and blessing that Christ gets so happy to see in you and me. And he shall see the fruit of the travail of his soul and be satisfied. For by the knowledge of himself which he possesses and imparts, shall my uncompromisingly righteous one justify many. For he shall bear their iniquity with the consequences, says the Lord. You come into that place of intimacy with the Father, all to the praise and glory of what the Father has accomplished in you through His Son, Jesus, by making you one with Himself. Oh my goodness, what glory, what riches, what wonders of joy. And that is consistently there as the beating of your heart, as the, as the beating of your heart and the breathing of your breath, as the sun shines from heaven and more certainly than all of these things, so his unchanging everlasting life that is in you and is given in you, maintained in you and perfected in you is that life of perfect knowing of the Father, fellowship of the Father, living in the knowledge of the true God and eternal life. It is glory forevermore and it will never cease in its power. It will never lessen. So I want to charge you from the scriptures here. Listen to this. It pleased the Father, it says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, that the fullness of himself would dwell in Jesus bodily. Look at it, verse 19. For it has pleased the Father that all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, power, attribute, should dwell in Jesus Christ permanently. Yes, and then chapter 2, verse 9 and 10 of Colossians. For in him, in Christ, the whole fullness of the deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. And you are in him made full, having come the fullness of life in Christ. You too are filled with the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature. Now, take this prayer, my heavenly Father, seeing the wonder of your divine purpose to reconcile me with yourself, to make me one with yourself in Christ Jesus. I bow my knee before you, my loving heavenly Father. I acknowledge and recognize you are my Father and I am your child. And I thank you, Father, rooted and grounded in Christ, in his great love, that together with all saints, I may come to know what is the height, the depth, the breadth, the length of that love, and become a body wholly filled and flooded you, with you, my loving Father, and have the richest measure of your divine presence. And I believe, Father, according to your power that's at work in me, you are able to accomplish this in me beyond anything I could ask or pray. Father, I give you all the glory through Jesus Christ in me, that I'm your child, that you are my Father, and I worship you, Father. I worship you. 
Ore mi che so brandasso compramendere di a sabramandro lo sobravaga. I worship you, my Father. I worship you that I may live in oneness with you, in unbroken communion with you, that you uphold me and keep me in this glorious understanding that you give me through Jesus Christ, to know you, my loving Father, the only true living God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day.